Before setting up the lives and the mechanics for losing the game, I want to finish off the underlying structure. So we've got some new assets. In the sprites, we now have a sprite space, which is 256 by 48. The origin is centered, and it's just this little message that says press space. In the edit sprite, there is a text tool, and you can just type out a message. We also have this sprite enter which is also 256 by 48 and the message is press enter to start and then we have this sprite heart which is 16 by 16 the origin is not centered and if we look at it you can see that it does not touch the edge of the image panel and that's okay because we can have a little bit of breathing room around our sprite Next, I've added a few new backgrounds. I've added one for background lose and background title, both the same size as the other ones. Then I've created new objects for the object space and object enter. And right now they just are holding on to the sprites. We will use these objects in place of buttons to start the game and go back to the main menu. And then finally I added some rooms. I added a room title and made sure that that is the first one in the list. And then I added a room lose. And real quick, before I forget, you will notice that I do not have an object for the sprite heart. We don't need an object, we just need the image because that is what is going to be drawn on screen to represent the player's lives. So let's quickly set up our object enter and space. Open up the object enter and we will give it the add event keyboard, enter, and this object is going to be placed on our title screen, so it will then go to room 1. So we come over to main 1, and we can just go to next room, because the next room after the title screen is the first level of the game. If we had a room in between that had the instructions on how to play the game, then we might want to actually change this to different room and then specify that it is going to room 1. Click OK and then open up the object space and add event keyboard space and this is going to appear in the win and lose screens so it will send us back to the title. So main one different room we want to set the room to room title Click OK, and then let's open up the room title. Come over here, find our object enter, place that in the room. That's uh, about center, I guess. Then we open up room win, and we want to make sure we have selected the object space. Put that in the room. Close it, and then open the room lose, and then we want to make sure it is object space again, and put that in. Okay, so everything is now in place, and we are ready to begin setting up the life system. Game Maker has a built-in life property, and it has actions that will allow us to manipulate it. We're actually going to do this first in the object enter, so open that again, and this is under the score tab and we are looking for the life category this first one set lives and we want to drag that above the go to next room we will set our new lives to three not relative and click OK the reason we aren't setting this up in a game start event is because if we lose the game or if we win it then we will go back to the title screen if we want to play the game again, then when we start the game, it won't reset our lives because a game start event only happens once when the game first opens and initializes. So by setting it up this way, then every time a player starts a new game from the title screen, it will set the initial lives to three. So now we can close this. And because it is a built-in property, the lives is a global variable. We talked about global variables in the last game and lives will basically just be something that any object can access throughout the game. But just like our point system in Pong, we now have to set up a way to actually display our lives on screen. So we're going to create a new object, 
and I'm going to call this obj underscore life counter. It doesn't need a sprite because it's only holding data, but we do want to come down here and this time check persistent. Persistent means that as soon as the object is created, it will exist in every room afterward. This prevents us from having to put in place multiple objects that do exactly the same thing. And since this object will never move or be manipulated, we don't really need to worry about changing anything. So it's all right if we continue using the same object throughout our game. So to get this object to display our lives on screen, we need to come to Add Event, Draw, Draw. And to display our lives, we need to go back to the Score tab and find this Draw Life Images that has the three little hearts in it. We could display our lives as a number counter, but by drawing the life images, we can display them graphically using the little heart sprite that we created. So drag that over, and we want this to begin drawing at an X of 64, a Y of 456, and we want to give it the sprite, sprite heart. Click OK, and then we need to open up our room one and actually place this life counter object within it. So make sure you have that selected and just put it anywhere in the room. And again, we will get this little blue ball with a question mark in it indicating that it does not have a sprite, but that it does exist within the room. So close the window. And now we're ready to begin losing lives. So let's come over to our objects and find the object ball. Open that up again. And this is going in the outside room event, because every time the ball goes off the screen, we want to lose a life. First we want to check and make sure that this is the last ball on the screen. As I mentioned later when we get into adding power-ups for multi-ball, we don't want every ball to cause us to lose a life. We only want to lose a life if it is the last ball on screen. So we need to come over to control and in our questions find this test instance count and drag it to the very top. We want to select the object, object ball, we want to set the number equal to 1. Because at this point, the ball still exists. It's only just now gone off screen. It hasn't been destroyed yet. That is the very last thing in the list. But by setting it equal to 1, we are making sure that there are no other balls on screen. So if this is the last ball, then we need to lose a life. So let's drag in some blocks, because we are going to have multiple actions here. And we'll come back to our score and set lives drag that into the blocks, and we will set it to negative 1 relative. So it will subtract 1 from the current life score. Click OK. Then we need to check and see if there are no more lives. So in the lives, we need to test lives, drag that underneath, and we want to set the value to 1, and set this to smaller than. So basically 0 or any negative number. Ideally, we should only ever get a zero, but this way we are ensuring that if we do go into the negatives for whatever reason, then it will also trigger that we have lost. So click OK. I'm going to come back into control and drag a few more blocks in underneath that test. And then I want to come back to main one and different rooms. Drag that into the new blocks and we want to set this to the lose screen because if our lives have reached zero or less, then we have lost the game. If we still have some lives left, however, we want it to basically just go through and reset the ball. So let's go back to control, bring in else, bring in a few more blocks, and then we will drag this create instance of object ball weight into the new blocks. When you've only got one action like this, these blocks aren't really necessary because remember, a condition deals with the action that is directly beneath it. But I like to put things in blocks like this so that I can more easily see what is going on. So to recap, as soon as the ball has gone outside the room, it will make sure that it is the only ball left on the screen. If it is, then it will subtract one from our current lives. It will check to see if we have zero or negative lives. If that's the case, then we've lost and we will go to our room lose. Otherwise, it will create an object ball weight above the paddle and then it will destroy itself.
Note that because the destroy instance lies outside of the condition and all of this, it will destroy itself anyway, whether it's the last ball or not. So when we have multiple balls, it will check and see if it is the only one, and if it's not, then it'll just destroy itself. So click OK, and let's test the game. Hit Enter to start. Move around. You can see down here in the bottom we've got our lives being displayed. So let's shoot the ball off, and let's just go ahead and lose. If, uh, if we can do that in a timely fashion. Okay, so then when we press space, come back to the beginning. I'm just going to take it on faith that the windscreen works the same way. So there we have it. We now have a functioning breakout clone. All you'd really need to do now is just add as many levels as you want, setting up each room differently, and you have a playable game. But that can get a little tedious after a while. If you look at later brick-breaking games like Arkanoid, they added power-ups that would change the size of the paddle or the ball, do a number of different things that created more interesting gameplay. So in the next video, we'll take our game to the next level and look at adding in some power-ups.